Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, taking you through the Oracle sector, giving my thoughts and opinions on certain coins and protocols within this. And I'm also going to show you which coins I've allocated to very recently. One of them, I think, has very good pumpamentals over the short term. So you may want to get in on that one. Not financial advice, of course. If you do enjoy the content in today's video, make sure you like the video, turn on those post notifications. And if you're feeling good, drop a nice comment down below. So last week was the SmartCon 2021, the Chainlink conference covering everything smart contract based. If you haven't checked out Sergey Nazarov's keynote speech from that, I would highly recommend doing so. If you're an investor in the Oracle space and you maybe aren't keeping up to date with everything that's going on, I will be covering an in-depth video on Chainlink soon, but I would definitely recommend going and listening to that. I'll leave the video down below, absolutely epic, and it will make you super bullish on the Oracle sector as a whole. Now, this industry is only currently at a market cap of $12.5 billion, which is outstandingly small in comparison to all of the things that this is going to bring to cryptocurrency over the coming years. Smart contracts are going to power almost everything from insurance to finance, house deeds, car ownership, auditing, records management, and just so much more. And all of these smart contracts that are going to be powered are going to be powered by oracles. Otherwise, there's no way of getting the data from the off-chain world into an on-chain environment. Now, Chainlink has established itself as the number one protocol in this sector. There's no denying that. 12.5 billion, the whole sector, almost 11 billion of that being allocated towards Chainlink's market cap. So a clear winner in this sector already. This is the fillet steak, if you will, and the rest of these are fighting it out for the position of hamburger. And down here, we have some of the maybe offal or even mincemeat, if you want to call it that. So this is a sector of, you know, varying proportions. Some of these projects may not be here in a few years time, but there's definitely a lot of opportunity from trying to pick out good small cap ones and hoping that they can get all the way up here to around the number two, three or four spot and take up a little bit of that market share. And that could be to the tune of a few hundred million dollars or even up to one billion dollars, I would suggest, as we're seeing the likes of Winklink, which is a Tron native Oracle with a market cap of half a billion dollars, which is rather impressive. I do think maybe Justin Tron is just pumping his bags here and pushing this up for a bit of a joke. Then we have Band here with a market cap of around $270 million, which is nearly a 40X away from the winner of the category, Chainlink here. IXEC RLC and API3, potential contenders to do well, but for me, I prefer to look a little bit further down the list as from the research I've been doing, there's not been a huge amount that really separates, say, a Band from a Tellor. And a Tellor has $86 million market cap and Band has $270 million. So for me, a 3X from Tellor would make a lot of sense and is a significantly better risk to reward ratio than putting my money into band. Now about 90% of my Oracle allocation is in Chainlink. It's one of my biggest positions in crypto. I am super bullish on Chainlink. So let's have a little look at Link before I move on to some of these lower cap ones and I talk you through some of the areas that I've been looking at and ones I've previously allocated to and no longer hold. So Chainlink with a $25 price tag, around 11 billion in market cap. And if we just scroll down here and look at the chart, it's 53% off from its all time high. And this was around last summer. So this is July, August of 2020. And you can see it had this big parabolic run and a nice big spike here, which made these previous pumps look rather insignificant. And this is a trend that I see in crypto all the time. If you zoom out and look at the bigger picture, there's always these big pumps at the time, but they always come to be very insignificant in the grand scheme of things, because this is now absolutely dwarfed by the 2021 pump, if we just pull that up. So this is the summer 2020, and now 2021 is all the way up here. And now we're in a prime position where Link has pulled back significantly, and you can allocate to this, and without a shadow of doubt in my mind, of course, not financial advice, do your own research, all of that stuff, but one day, very soon, this pump here will be made to look insignificant by the next one that comes for Chainlink. And so this is the Oracle I've been allocating most of my capital to in the last week I've added to this position again, as I'm feeling really bullish on Link. And I think for the long-term approach in your investment career, you need to have big bags of the outstanding winners in any sector. And clearly Chainlink is killing the Oracle sector and will be that number one spot. Essentially, it's the Ethereum of the Oracles. Recently, they've had two major updates announced at SmartCon 2021. The first one was this CCIP, something they've been working on for a few years here, 
cross-chain interoperability protocol. This is actually going to allow for interchain messaging and token movements across different blockchains. So this gives the ability for a smart contract to execute across different blockchains. So this is the next era of where smart contracts are going. And this is a huge improvement that can't be understated. And so I think I'm going to do a full video on Chainlink and cover this kind of thing in here. And also they announced this Chainlink Keepers are now live on ETH mainnet. And this is all about off-chain computation being added to decentralized applications through a network of keepers. So both of these are going to be huge improvements to the smart contract ecosystem and propel the blockchain industry forward leaps and bounds. Without this innovation from Chainlink, we wouldn't see the blockchain industry flourish as much as it's going to. So they are just a key component of crypto in general. Then they also announced a recent partnership here with AccuWeather now running a Chainlink node. So weather information provider AccuWeather announced Wednesday it will be launching a Chainlink node to place its weather APIs directly onto blockchain-based smart contracts. These APIs for weather information such as temperature, precipitation, wind speed, and natural disaster clarifications will all be possible. So this is going to bring about an era of crop insurance, planning for weather, for natural disasters, that kind of things to ensure that people in certain regions that are dependent on farming for their income can actually get insurance, an insurance that is paid out based on this data that is incorruptible, it's on the blockchain, the payout will be made upon specific criteria being hit, and not on an insurance company's whim saying no we're not paying out because we don't believe that that actually happened this is a recent use case i started to look into and it's just super impressive and it's going to really bring about a better environment for those in developing nations where farming is their main source of income they need crop insurance for when we have these massive disasters this climate change that's going on that can see them just go through periods of almost famine in their industry so if you're not holding a bag of link i don't know how to help you here but let's have a little look at some of the other plays within this sector We've got the likes of API3, as I mentioned. I previously held this one, but it didn't perform as well as I thought it would. And to be honest, when I reflected on this, I did sell it off and put it into Link because I looked at the performance level and it was evident that Chainlink was just outperforming. There were periods where API3 would have a big run up and you could make some gains on Chainlink, but it pulled back significantly after the run-ups every single time. And so unless I was more active in my approach and taking those big peak moves and taking them off the table at those precise moments over a few days or so, then I wasn't maximizing the fact I had leverage in the Oracle space. So I sold that one off. Previously, I've held Teller as well. And this one is a very decentralized cryptocurrency in the Oracle space, one that's got the backing of Binance. And it is a decent hold to be fair. And it does seem to have some life in it right now. Over the last month or so, we've had a nice run up in this market, still over 70% down from the highs. And I'm sure it will eclipse its all time high again at some point. But for me, again, this is like going back to an old girlfriend at this point. I'm not gonna be doing that. And these former bags I've held are ones that I'm now avoiding. I also used to hold Deer for a period. This had a big hype cycle. Call. Initially, it ran up really quickly. This was last summer. Elio Trades covered it and it got a super, super giga pump here. And then again, during this year's cycle, we saw it moon up here to around $5.73. Again, showing some signs of recovery here. No real notable volume, a little bit of a bar down here, but nothing major. But again, this will have a lot of salty bag holders behind it. And so I'm looking for newer coins. DOS, again, another one I held in this sector for a while. I did actually ride this pump back in last summer. I got in very early. I think it was like two, three, four cents, something like that. And I managed to sell on the way down. I sold it around 20 cents. And I did hold a bag after that as a moon bag. Uh, they didn't really deliver on some of the promises that were due. And I saw the community starting to turn a little bit on the developers. And so for me, I think, again, this one has a lot of salty bag holders. People that have been buying peaks up here or maybe up here, and they will be looking to offload this coin. It's still only around five cents, which puts it all the way back to where it was here at around the end of July of 2020. So no real markup since then. Now, one of the coins I had my eye on was this one, Ares Protocol. And this one had a hype cycle behind it, market cap now around $5 million. But as you can see, it had a giga pump up here. And this was when people were saying, is altcoin season back? We're seeing this one put in like a 400% gain in a week. But I think this was kind of a bit of a pump and dump here, to be honest with you. And now again, after this has happened, they've had their pump. People would have been buying tops up here around 25 cents. It was up here for a while, quite a bit of volume. You've got salty bag holders once again. This one does seem to have links to Polkadot, 
which is interesting. And with Polkadot season coming at some point during this year, it could be one that flies. And I may re-evaluate my position again and check this one out at a later date. I think they are going for a parachain slot on Kusama, if I am rightly remembering. But then we have another newbie, UTU coin. And this one is actually a Kenyan-based Oracle. And this one's more geared towards trust score systems, those kind of APIs for the DeFi scene. So this one could be very interesting. They've got a lot of partnerships recently. So this one says UTU and Numio partner. They're working together to list UTU coin on the Numio app and integrate UTU's trust infrastructure with Numio identity. And some of these ones down here as well, integrations, they're teaming up to add the trust infrastructure of UTU to this big data protocol. And again, if we go down here, it's all about credit worthiness. So this kind of goes against decentralized finance for me, as we shouldn't really be looking at, does the individual have good credit scores, etc. I thought we were trying to get away from this. But if you think about the companies that are going to be moving into DeFi, credit scores are the way things were done traditionally. And I'm sure they will want to copy paste that over into the blockchain industry as well. So this one could be interesting. And with a market cap of $3.7 million, it's one that I would take a punt on rather than buying up a higher market cap like a band, a Tello, a Dia, something that's already had a big run. If we just go down here, you can see it did have a pump during the start of this year. It went up to around 22 cents come down all the way to around two cents and now sat at around four cents. Not bad at all. Uh, there will be some token unlocks on this one as well to keep your eyes out on. I'm not going to give you all the information in this video. Go and do your own research. Pretty easy to find through their tokenomics and through Telegram, but at 81% down from its highs and with a micro cap, but something that's actually trying to bring their data to DeFi, this one could be a mover. So I almost bought this one, but the one that I've actually bought is not even listed on the Oracle sector here on CoinGecko. And so this one is called Charlie 3 or C3 being the ticker. And if you know about this one, this is gonna be the Cardano smart contract Oracle of choice. And from my calculations, there's no market cap here, but there's roughly 17 million coins. I should add some more zeros here. Puts it a market cap of around 35 million dollars in total so this would nestle in somewhere around rank nine here just above kylin and between kylin and nest so what i do like about this one is that it launched in april so it did catch a bit of a wave during the last altcoin cycle and it did spike all the way up to around four bucks three dollars 92 down 46 percent currently but a lot of people who are buying this were newbies to the industry i think they are most likely have either sold off and buggered off out the industry or they're potentially just holding on as they didn't really know what they were getting into at that point in time. They were just buying Cardano and anything related to the Cardano project. Not a huge amount of volume behind this one here, $300,000, $400,000 per day. And then we had a bit of a spike here up to around half a million, then $1 million in trade just over the last 24 hours. And you can see there's a bit of a blip here with a notable bit of volume coming in. And this one's only tradable on Uniswap right now. So this does add to the fact it can pump quite significantly if a lot of people want to get in on it because liquidity isn't really that deep. And so it looks like people are starting to allocate to this in the anticipation of the Cardano launch of smart contracts. So tomorrow we're expecting that Charles Hoskinson will let us know the exact date smart contracts go live on ADA. And this is gonna be very good for the Oracle provider, Charlie. Now we're roughly three months into its life cycle just beyond here. So launch in April, May, June, July, and then we're around mid-August here. And so around 17 and a half million coins currently in supply. When we get to around October time, the inflation increases as I think it's like team tokens getting released and stuff. But during this period here where the inflation is pretty high, but not as high as it's going to be, I think there's a period of opportunity here with what is coming from smart contracts on Cardano and the hype cycle that is going to ensue. Team seems pretty decent to be fair. And recently they were on Hashoshi's channel doing a bit of an interview. They came across as a good bunch of guys, no qualms whatsoever. And this does seem to be at the 
front of the race for oracles on cardano so around two bucks this is one to definitely monitor if the crypto market is pulling back today maybe we can get it under two dollars but i've already allocated to this position but i would be willing to allocate a bit more and take full advantage of the cardano hype cycle that's gonna come so i did post this over on my patreon giving the guys a heads up about what i was adding to and that was this Oracle over on Cardano called Charlie 3 and kind of my thoughts behind this and why I think that this one is going to pump up. And the fact is not even added on the Oracle tab yet on CoinGecko. Once it does get added on there and people can see it's an ADA project as well, I do think this is going to get a lot of attention. If you want to join my Patreon, it's only five bucks a month. Link down below, come and check it out. So my current strategy here was to allocate towards a very low market cap Oracle play Nothing that's yet hit like 100 million in market cap, one that's got good pumpamentals behind it and can possibly get up to like position two or three on the chart here. The majority of my coins on the Oracle space are all allocated to Chainlink around 90%, but I always find it's good to have a second and third horse in this race. So Charlie 3 is my pick for now, and I will continue to monitor that situation. If that changes and I sell out, I will let you guys know, but I see this as a good position to get leverage on my Chainlink position. If it can outpace Chainlink by two, three, four, five times, I'll have a big bag that I can then push into the Chainlink token and increase that stack. So there you have it. That's my Oracle analysis for today. If the ideas that I presented here resonate with you, let me know down below. I'll be keen to hear what you're doing in this sector of the market. I do believe this will pump soon. We've had Ethereum pump, we've had DeFi pump, and so the smart contract bloodstream provided by Oracles must pump next, in my opinion. If you enjoyed the content in today's video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.